Welcome aboard, it's Captain G with Operation Drago 2.2 NATO. So uh, before I jump into the NATO turn, a bit of housekeeping on 1.4, the uh, US turn. I had a YouTube copyright strike that knocked out the auto on half my video. Um, so I apologize for that. Just wanted to recap on the counterinsurgency role. The U.S. was successful, so that killed the Soviet insurgent and allowed them to allowed the U.S. to place one paramilitary and El Salvador aligned to the U.S. But is not worth any IPP. And then under non-combat movements, the enterprise. I'm sorry, the Nimitz battle group moved down one, two, three, off of Puerto Rico to conduct naval gunfire exercises on the island of Vieques. And the USS Dallas moved to A-36, which is the only port into Nicaragua, so it can stop the Soviet arms flow into the Sandinistas. So that's uh, that was the part that was silent during the movie, or the video, rather. So let me jump into... NATO 2.2, Dateline, Ottawa. In an address to Parliament today, the Canadian Prime Minister outlined Soviet actions escalating tensions in Europe and around the world. Despite protestations to the contrary, deployment of Eastern European air and armored forces to Libya put proof to who is behind the increase in Libyan terrorist activity throughout North Africa and the Mediterranean. The NATO Naval Task Force deployed to the Gulf of Aden reports an increase in terrorist activity in Ethiopia. Turkey has protested the unannounced and unprovoked Soviet military buildup along their eastern border. Denmark reports Soviet diesel electric submarines operating within Danish national waters. And our southern neighbors have called Moscow's arms shipments to the Sandinistas, quote, a mounting danger in Central America that threatens the security of the United States. Canada stands with her allies in Europe and her freedom-loving neighbors in North America. Therefore, I put before Parliament a measure to increase funding to the Canadian Armed Forces, joining Turkey and Denmark and the United Kingdom in the NATO members that have pledged to do so as well. This is not a move of escalation, but of preparedness, not a move of aggression, but of deterrence. Planning phase, determination of escalation. So as we discussed last turn, starting on turn two, we do the escalations. NATO's income goes up two from eight to 10. NATO needs to hit 12 to go to DEFCON 4. So despite the increased preparedness that the Canadian Prime Minister outlined today, they are still at DEFCON 5. Technology, let me pivot and bring you over here. So with the upgraded Army base in Marmara, NATO now has four technology dice. We are committing two dice to anti-missile defense. We still have one for long-range missiles and the eighth one seeds, suppression of enemy air defense. Those are the four techs. Oh, pathetic. White four, yellow nine, blue five, blue four. So nine is, that's... Suppression of enemy air defense. So that goes to stage four. So NATO has completed that technology. All right, purchase units. Let me pivot you back to roughly here, I think. Maybe raise you up slightly. You should be able to see all of the movements and everything else here. All right, so NATO ended last turn with an IPP cash on hand of eight. You can see that. All right, we're spending two on each on two different paramilitaries as some of the member nations are mobilizing reservists 
four drills to increase their preparation. We are going to save the other four, two, three, four, for next turn. That is the builds. Non-combat movements. So, still at stage DEFCON uh, 5, we can only do a naval movement from one C zone. So, all the way up here in A6, the John F. Kennedy Task Force. Let me pull that up so you can see what that force represents. Now, for those who are... Uh, following along and might be sitting at home saying, wait a minute, Captain G, John F. Kennedy was a U.S. aircraft carrier and a U.S. president. They were, but NATO starts with two super carriers, and on my map, I'm playing that as the John F. Kennedy battle group and the USS Saratoga that are deployed under NATO command. Um, so they're NATO units. NATO cannot build super carriers. They can only build regular carriers, i.e. Uh, the French and British uh, carriers. So that's the way I'm, I'm playing and that's the way it's set up. So the Kennedy battle group, much like the president, doesn't go far without uh, little brother Robert, Bobby, and the air wing, Bob. So from... Kennedy, Bob, Air Group, has one uh, naval attack bomber. I'm going to air redeploy from A6, from that supercarrier, to the NATO Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa down in Djibouti, CJTF Djibouti. So they are going to go right down here. To that naval air base. That's an air movement. The Royal Navy um, nuclear attack boat, SSN, hearing reports of Soviet submarines exploring uh, maritime depths and biological life. They're going to leave A6. They're going to go one move to A10. They're going to go through the Kiel Canal to A12. Then they're going to go up here to A13 to join these Swedish and Finnish fishermen and explore way up here quietly. That they're up there. Oh, that's off camera. I'm sorry. I apologize. So moving from A6, one through the canal, two, three, although there is a the shipyard that can give them the boost, but they chose not to go past those Soviet diesel electrics. Okay, they're all the way up here in E13. So once you pick a C zone, you can move one, some, or all. So the balance of the Kennedy battle group, again, this task force card, is going to move from A6 down to A23, and that is. The Kennedy, one cruiser, one destroyer, one frigate. The amphibious assault ship will continue moving. One more to A-22 and go into port in this British major port in southern England for some rest, rest and refit. Okay, so that completes the naval movement. Get this out of the way for now. Other non-combat. Moving from Scotland to the Midlands. One mechanized infantry. Moving from the Midlands to Southern Europe. One Royal Marine. All right. Moving from... I'm going to have to lift you up again. Nordland to Akersluis. Two Norwegian mechanized infantry units. So I'll move them down. Trying not to knock everything on the board when I reach across. Apologize. And then the two that are already there are going to do a naval sea lift, embarking in that major port that can move two units. One, two and drop off in Benelux for some joint exercises 
with the Belgians, Netherlands, and Luxembourgian armed forces. In Greece, we have one mechanized infantry that will move into Marmara to do some more joint preparedness with their friends and neighbors, the Turks. Does that what happen? And then in Anatonia, these two Turkish mechanized infantry units are moving back to rearm and refit in Marmara as well, away from the Soviets as an act of de-escalation, hopefully to prevent further aggression from the Soviets. And then in Italy, the Italians and the French have announced joint exercises in the southern of, south of France. So Italy is sending, anytime they have an opportunity to do joint military exercises in the south of France, they send everyone. So one, two, all the mechs and all of the artillery. So four mechs, one artillery to the south of France. And then the SAM battery in Lazio embarking from this minor shipyard going one, two, three, will embark back to Marmara to participate Italian, Greek, Turkish military exercises in Marmara. And that's it for all of the ground and air forces that are moving this turn. I'm going to now place units. So as we discussed, the Greeks are mobilizing some conscripts, to give them some training. And the, you see this? Yes. So in Northern Germany, I'm placing one paramilitary up in that Northern Army group. All right, so that takes that off. That completes place units. Collect income. So we move the income from eight to 10 for NATO. And I'll put those all on a card off camera. And so that 10 plus the four that I saved gives NATO a 14 cash on hand, turn three. All right, that wraps up the NATO turn, short and sweet. I will now turn it over to FLAC 88 and Soviet Global Command 2.3. This is Captain G with the term without music and hence no chance of a copyright strike. Um, I'm gonna end my turn now for the casual observers, but for my friend FLAC 88, I'll do a quick recap of the land and sea zones where I moved units so he and I are in sync. Okay, thanks everyone. All right, FLAC 88 in Marmara. NATO has five mechanized infantry. That's four um, Turkish and one Greek. I have one artillery, one SAM, one upgraded major army base, one US A-10 and one NATO air superiority fighter. In Djibouti, we now have a naval, just, yeah, a naval attack bomber. Um, in southern France, we have one, two, three, four, five, six mechs and an artillery, a SAM battery, a strategic bomber. In Benelux, I have three mechs and the fighter. In port in the major port in southern England, a NATO amphibious assault ship moved into nor uh, southern England to join the units that started there. One Royal Marine in Midlands, a Sam and a Mech, and in Scotland, a Sam and a Mech. Did Benelux in northern Germany? I have a Sam battery four next-gen MBTs, and one paramilitary. And in Akersluis, two mechs who came down from the north.
Okay, I think that was everything that I moved. Well, the uh, Kennedy Task Force is now in A23. Yes, okay. So that's Captain G, over and out.